Hey everyone, it's Lexi. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you all the books that I ended up reading in the month of July. So it ended up being a stellar reading month for me, like all the books that I've read, I've loved. So I read a total of five books and two audiobooks for seven total. So I was, you know, really down with the reading. I did read quite a lot. So this was actually, I looked at my little bullet journal right here that I like log all the books that I read for each month. And this is actually the best book reading month that I've had since when I tore my ACL and I just read for like two weeks straight when I had my knee surgery. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So all the books that I have mentioned in here, I have, besides the audiobooks, I do have reviews for. So I'll also link them down below and I'll link them up in the cards here as well. So if you're interested, they're all spoiler free. So don't worry about getting spoiled with any of the details, but they're all down below and up in the cards if you are interested in reading about them. Uh, so so let's just go ahead and get started. So the first book that I ended up reading this month was Lost Lake by Sarah Addison Allen and I was just on a really big Sarah Addison Allen kick. I had like I had read um, quite a few of her books and I had these two left of hers that on my TBR shelf that I wanted to read so I finished all the ones that I've owned of hers which felt really good. So The Lost Lake follows the story of Abby who is a owner of Lost Lake and she when she was young she ended up marrying this very rich man and when they're honeymooning in Paris they witness a girl try to kill herself by jumping off a bridge and they that changes everything. They donate all their money to charity and open up this little like cabiny area called Lost Lake and then her niece is Kate who is a woman who just lost her husband a year ago in this book when we get introduced to her she's just finally waking up and from that because she felt like she was asleep she wasn't really living so she her mother-in-law is very overpowering and making all these decisions for her so they pack up while the house is being packed up they go on a little trip to Lost Lake where they kind of you know their lives kind of change forever what's nice about these books is that they do have an aspect of magical realism in there as well so in this case there is this alligator um that has a little tie-in with this town and the people there so i really enjoyed this book overall it was just really heartwarming and it felt really good i really was attached to all the characters um in here as well i love seeing them grow and progress and how their stories intertwined and just all the twists and turns that this story had. All the characters were just really likable and I could picture myself going to this like town here as well. So I gave it like a 4 out of 5 stars. It was really good. Definitely a step up from when I read The Sugar Queen last month and I did not like that one at all. So it was a good improvement overall. So I was really happy with how that all turned out. So yeah, I would highly recommend this book for magical realism, this author in general. And like I said, I really loved it. So this was the last Sarah Addison Allen book that I had on my shelf and conveniently it was also the Tales and Teacups book club pick for the month of July so it ended up working out two birds with one stone. But um, it's called Garden Spells and this follows a family, um, the Waverleys that live in this small town and the women in this family are rumored to have magical powers. So we get introduced to four of them actually. We get introduced to Claire who is a baker and she's always lived in this small town. She doesn't really step outside her comfort zone and they have what's unique about this family is they have this garden where the plants are rumored to do like make love potions or the apples if you take a bite of it you see your future. Um, so like they have that little interesting thing there. Then we also get introduced to Sydney who is Claire's rebellious sister and um, she's kind of run away since she was 18 and we find out that she was um, a part of a very abusive relationship so she's running away from her boyfriend with her daughter. And then we also get introduced to Evelyn who is their cousin who's a little bit older and her basically weird thing about her is that she can basically uh, when she sees an object, she has to give it to that person and they ended up really, really needing it. They choose to use it. So that was really neat. I love this book. I think this is definitely my favorite of this author's and this is actually her debut. So if you want to know more about it, my discussion of it, 
that is spoiler free i link it in the cards and also for if you participated in the book club comment down below so you can i'll be interested to know what you think but like it was just really good i love how it really depicted like small town in north carolina and i could just perfectly picture what life was like for these women i just found them all to be very likable and unique and they had their little quirks which i liked and how like i know they're it kind of left on an open ending which i thought was just really gripping and i know there's like a little sequel to this so i'll have to once i finish more books on my tbr then i'll get it but i really loved it it just had the magical realism in here it's not like slap in your face very abstract like the strange and beautiful sorrows of Avery lavender this one's more fun and it has like that harry potter kind of just fun magical feeling and it's kind of seamlessly woven into the story so it doesn't feel very odd or like the the book doesn't lose its rhythm with it so i really enjoyed it i gave it a five out of five stars it was just really good so i highly recommend this is a perfect summer read there's only like for students at least we only have august left so pick this up this is a good beach read summer read it was just really really good and it's really quick too so it's like less than 300 pages so you can finish it very quickly so next i then read the fantastic beasts and where to find them audiobook which i got from the library and this is narrated by eddie redmayne who is uh newt from the movie so i really i like have a crush on him so i was like i get to hear your voice for like two and a half hours so i listened to it when i was going to and from my clinical sites for the summer and basically it's um his like book and they talk about some of the fantastic beasts i like they do add some sound effects into this audiobook as well so i was really engaged the whole time it's like some of the names are really odd so it's like i'm trying to picture which ones i remember from the movies or from the harry potter series so it was really neat to see about that and then i also really liked kind of the introduction and how he talks about basically things that are going to be happening in the future movies which I think is really exciting just with like Dumbledore and Grindelwald and like all that stuff so I'm really excited for the next movie to come out um so yeah I would highly recommend listening to this on audiobook it's like like I said it's only like two and a half hours so it's really really quick if even that so it was just really fun to read I gave it a what did I give it a four out of five stars I really enjoyed it so I highly recommend if you can get your hands on the audiobook go check it out it was just really it made my ride enjoyable so that's always good so next this was probably the best book that I've read probably this year and it is the secret keeper by Kate Morton and I read the lake house by the same author um, last year and I really enjoyed it so this is a book actually that my mom and my aunt have all read and I don't know why it's taken me so long to pick it up but I'm so happy that I did so it follows the story of a girl named Laurel who um, when she was 16 she was kind of hanging out in her family's little treehouse and when she's there she witnesses this man kind of coming onto her property and there is some conflict going on and her mother ended up killing this man right before her eyes and that has always scarred Laurel for like the rest of her life. She doesn't really talk, she doesn't tell any of her siblings about it, it's not discussed further, like she completely wipes it from her memory until kind of it, the it kind of comes ties back into her mother who's on her deathbed and she's kind of reminiscing everything um, that's happened when they find this photograph that has ties to the man that was killed so Laurel wants to figure out what happened she wants to know like she kind of wants to put an end to the mystery so she can relax so she kind of digs up her mother's past and how her mother had ties to like how so basically what I really liked is that this book was told from basically three different perspectives. Laurel, um, who is like kind of discovering it, and then while she's kind of discovering this information, the book will flash back to um, Laurel's mother and this other woman named Vivian. And I love this book so much. Like it's really dense, I will say dense material, because the author writes more narration than the character speaking. So you can see like there's a lot of paragraphs in here. Um, so you can see, so it's, it takes a while to get through and how many pages? It's just under 500 pages, but I honestly read the last 300 in one sitting. I just sat outside in the back um, in like the nice chairs with some, you know, a little cider and, you know, what about my reading but I could not put it down this book was just it had me gripped basically from the beginning I loved basically the mystery to it and you keep 
trying to guess like what happened because we know basically that this one person supposedly died during an air raid during World War II but we don't really know how this ties in to Laurel's mother and I highly recommend you pick this book up. I could not recommend this anymore. Best book that I've read this year, definitely within my top five books of all time ever. Like I gave it a five out of five stars. It was just amazing. Like I highly recommend you pick this up. It was just like I get so excited talking about it and I'm really upset that it took me this long to pick it up because I got this book quite a while ago and I was just really recommended to me so like I said pick this book up you will not be disappointed like I could not recommend this even more like it was just amazing so then the next audiobook that I ended up reading was actually a book that I already read but I really wanted to read or listen to the audiobook version and was talking as fast as I can from Gilmore Girls to Gilmore Girls uh, by Lauren Grant. Um, so this was her memoir that she came out late last year um, kind of basically following her career and basically from Gilmore Girls basically to Gilmore Girls and she kind of reflects on the different seasons and also she kind of keeps a diary there as well. Uh, so I already read this book last year and I really enjoyed it but I wanted to listen to the audiobook version because she is the one that's narrating it so I wanted to it but I think this book would be I think this book was more enjoyable reading like reading like listening to it then reading it just because like she has that comedic timing timing and she writes kind of in how she talks because she does talk fast and just kind of that comedic timing that comes through with the audiobook um i'm not sure if the audiobook comes with the pictures but she does reference pictures or graphs so maybe the book would be a good complimentary thing to like have if you're listening to it but it's just a really fun entertaining book to listen to like I always looked forward to listening to it and it was just really fun and I really enjoyed it so I gave this a four out of five stars I really enjoyed it it was just really fun to read and her stories and the writing it really goes through and she gets very personal so it's always nice to kind of read about that as well so I really enjoyed this so if you're looking for a good audiobook this is a really good one for you I then ended up reading Mean Streak by Sandra Brown and this is the second book of Sandra Brown's that I've read um, the first one was I think from earlier this year so this was an author that came recommended to me by my mom and my aunts again so this one was also really really good so it basically follows a doctor named Emery who is training for her marathon that her um, her like charity is running so for training she decides to like spend a long weekend go to the Smoky Mountains in North Carolina and run it so she gets more endurance training because of the altitude so she ends up waking up in this stranger's cabin with a big gash in her head and she doesn't remember the events leading up to it and what's basically going on is that this man he's not telling her his name he doesn't give her like any details about himself there's some mystery and she's really scared about it um, but then she their paths kind of cross with this guy's neighbors these two brothers that are basically like the scum of the earth and very very dangerous so she kind of comes to realize that maybe he's not the imminent threat that it's these two brothers here and so while all this is going on her husband Jeff is being questioned by detectives they think he is guilty of immediate divorce um, so they're trying to figure out what happens to her while she is trying to kind of figure out what happened to her why did she end up with this gash in her head was it this man like she doesn't know what's going on so this book is a really good like mystery thriller and what's really good about this author is what I've come to learn from our other books is that she always has a lot of twists and turns like what I thought initially within the next like within the first few chapters like was completely wrong with how it ended up turning up the chapters end on quite a big um like cliffhanger so you just want to keep reading and reading this book is always changing and it's very fast moving um so like it i read like like it said with um the secret keeper i read like the last 200 pages like in a matter like two days like i just flew through it it kept me on the edge of my seat the whole time and i was just really engrossed in the story as well and just how characters are not always what they're cracked up to be and how they're very different so i really 
loved reading this. I gave it a four out of five stars. It was just a really, really fun read. So if you're looking to get into the thriller genre, then I highly recommend you check this book out. I think it is really good. Just be aware that there's a lot of adult subject matter in here, so it may not be appropriate for you younger viewers. But um, overall, as I said, it was just really good and it was just really intense. And lastly, this is a book that I picked up from the library. When I saw it there, I was like, oh, that would be fun because I wasn't really sure if I, to buy the book and I may not like it. But it is Wire and Nerves um, by Marissa Meyer, which is basically a spin-off series, a like, graphic novel series following the Lunar Chronicles. It does take place um, after the events of winter, so you, I would recommend maybe making sure you finish the series before you start to read this because you will be spoiled on some plot points. But basically it follows Aiko who is now um, been tasked with the job, or she volunteered to do it actually, to kind of capture up the remaining wolf hybrid soldiers that Levana made that are still kind of terrorizing Earth and basically it just takes off from there. I don't want to spoil too much into it. Um, but what I really liked about it, like I said, I wasn't really sure if I was going to like it because I haven't read a graphic novel in like, I want to say like 12 years or something like that. So it's been a really, really long time. So I wasn't sure how I would kind of adapt to reading from this forum. But Marissa Meyer's like humor with her characters and the character's unique personalities really show through here as well. And just kind of that quick, like, humor I guess a quick humor and like dialogue as well we get to see all of our favorite characters from the Lunar Chronicles so that was really good to see and just Thorn like he is like my favorite like I love him um so I really love seeing him as well I will say though that the arc arc artwork is not my favorite I felt like it could have been a lot better I've seen a lot of fan art on Pinterest that I think would be better than the one that was in here so that was the only like disappointment but I gave it a four out of five stars it ends on quite a big of a cliffhanger um so I'm kind of happy I waited a little bit longer to pick this up um because the next one doesn't come out till January um it's still a little bit of a wait but it's not too bad but yeah I highly recommend that you pick this one up if you are a fan of Lunar Chronicles because it was just a really fun and you can finish it within like a day because graphic novels go really quick. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you felt about some of these books if you're interested to pick any of them up. So yeah, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys!